And look, if you're a Bitcoin maximalist, Bitcoin doesn't care. You don't care. None of this matters to you, except for one point. The one point is there's $500 trillion worth of money locked up in the traditional financial system. And to the extent that this gets normalized uh, and you can start to funnel money into 401ks at Fidelity, and if Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan start to handle this, hundreds of billions and then trillions of dollars are going to flow into Bitcoin, and Bitcoin's price is going to go from $16,000 a coin to $160,000 a coin to $1.6 million a coin to $10 million a coin. Veteran business executive and investor Michael Saylor is undoubtedly one of the most popular names in the digital assets industry. In addition to investing over $4 billion in Bitcoin for his software firm, Saylor has also dedicated a significant amount of his time to orange pilling others about the largest crypto asset by market cap. As a Bitcoin maximalist, Saylor's interview mostly centers around Bitcoin's core fundamentals and how they made him take the first step in August 2020. However, with the events of late 2022, the industry leader seems genuinely concerned about the continued survival of the industry as a whole. In an eye-opening Twitter Spaces discussion with popular crypto influencer Bitcoin Archive, Saylor discusses three scenarios which he believes are the only way for the industry to move forward after the tumult of the past year. Saylor titles the first scenario status quo. In this scenario, the industry continues to dangle in uncertainty while regulators slowly drag their feet about getting anything done on the regulatory front. Of course, this will only continue to set the industry back by years, if not decades. The scenario Saylor believes will work out well for all is what he titles the progressive scenario, where the industry gets the much-needed clarity on definitions and trading rules. Saylor believes the digital assets industry currently offers four categories of assets, and almost all are erroneously being tagged as commodities by issuers. But regulators could as well take a regressive stance when regulating the industry. According to Saylor, the good news for Bitcoin investors is that the leading crypto asset wins either way. In fact, the MicroStrategy executive firmly believes that Bitcoin's price will someday grow to $10 million per coin. We will now take you to Saylor's Twitter Spaces discussion as the business executive charts a path for the development of Bitcoin and the overall digital assets industry. Please watch the video to the end and smash the subscribe button and the notifications bell to get the latest updates about the cryptocurrency industry. If you like this video, remember to give it a like and drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm, so we can continue to bring you these videos. Thanks and enjoy the video. There's three paths forward for the industry. One path is status quo. We continue to twist in the wind <clears throat> while the SEC and CFTC pursue very slow enforcement actions against crypto scammers. And, and the problem with those actions is if you sue someone civilly and they're counterfeiting money, then they could just keep counterfeiting money to defend. And it takes four years before you get a result, right? That's one path. That has been the status quo for the past two years. And that's not a good path because the same crypto scammers that are using counterfeit money to defend in civil court are using counterfeit money, money to lobby in D.C. and try to corrupt the politicians and the political process and the laws. That was where we were before FTX's meltdown. I don't think we're going to stay in that status quo situation because I think people realize there's a lot of egg on their face and um, they can't afford to take another two to four years or eight years to clean up the industry. So that means we've been kicked out of the status quo to either the left path or the right path. The left path is very regressive. We're going to, you know, I'm going to issue a memo, everything with an ICO, everything with, an, with a pre-mine, everything with a controlling foundation, you know, everything that looks like a security, it all has to be shut down. And then that's carnage. 99.9% .9 of the industry dies. That's like the asteroid smacking into the, you know, into the earth 80 million years ago. And that'll just wipe out everything other than Bitcoin. Right. Right. And by the way, that 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 model is like institutional grade investors buy Bitcoin with cash from traditional banks. That's, you know, via registered traders. That's how MicroStrategy spent $4 billion to buy Bitcoin. We did it that way. 
That is the regressive path forward and the progressive path forward. <clears throat> and this is an opportunity, Archie. And there's probably, you know, probably there's one person in the industry that has the ability to do this. And that would be the chair of the SEC, the single pivotal, most powerful person in the crypto industry right now. The chair of the SEC has the power to say, I'm going to give you a registration path for digital commodities. I'm going to give you a registration path for digital currencies. I'm going to give you a registration path for digital securities. And I'm going to give you a registration path for digital tokens. I'm going to define this is what they are. You've got, you know, this is how you apply. If you're going to be, and I'm going to allow digital exchanges <clears throat> to operate trading these digital assets. If that happens, there is a path for a hundred thousand different digital assets, you know, over a decade from now, not now, but you would have a hundred assets, then a thousand assets, then 10,000 assets, then a hundred thousand digital assets. They would be trading on 24, seven, 365 digital exchanges that kind of look like Binance or look like Coinbase, but especially they look like Binance. I mean, Binance is, is kind of like doing everything everywhere in the world. And so the exchange would look like that, but they would be have to be regulated and they'd have to be transparent. And those exchanges would have to, in, in essence, come public in the United States, <clears throat> disclose all their assets, all their liabilities, all their conflicts of interest. And then they'd probably have to <clears throat> divest themselves of their conflict of interest. Like you can't, you can't trade against your customers, right? You can't, you can't issue your own security and then trade your security. During the conversation, Saylor explains that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is chiefly responsible for charting a progressive development plan for the crypto industry. However, he adds that there seems to be a dysfunctional relationship between industry players, policymakers, and regulators caused by the activities of rogue players like Sam Bankman-Fried, the former chief executive and founder of FTX. Saylor also notes that SEC Chair Gary Gansler might not be as quick to come to the industry's rescue because of last year's events. But when Gansler and the SEC finally get on board, Saylor believes other U.S. regulators will follow than other regulators around the world. So, what are regulators and policymakers waiting for before they begin serious work on getting the industry regulated? Here is what Michael Saylor believes is delaying the process. We can already see um, big organizations you know, BNY Mellon, Bank of America, Fidelity, they're already moving into, into uh, Bitcoin trading and Bitcoin custody. And so that, <clears throat> that's happening regardless. If we come back to my three scenarios, the, the status quo twisting in the wind or the regressive or the progressive scenario. In all three of those scenarios, Bitcoin is going to be uh, traded and custodied with regulated entities, with banks, regulated financial players. You're going to get your Bitcoin through block, through you'll get it through a, a Coinbase that's a publicly traded regulated company. You'll get it through a NIDIG. You'll get it through a Fidelity. You'll get it through a, a, a whatever bank. So that's happening regardless. If you get the regressive stance, you will have um, a small digital assets set of exchanges or crypto exchanges that trade that will have very narrow focus. They'll all, they'll all be regulated and registered and they will coexist with um, they'll coexist with all the self-custody solutions for Bitcoin and probably self-custody solutions for what other whatever other assets are are uh, registered and then in the most progressive case you know if if the regulators decide to actually lean into this thing and give people roadmaps for all these other digital assets i just laid out <clears throat> then you'll actually see you'll see a few of the strongest players cross the chasm like uh you know a Coinbase crosses the chasm when they delist and they don't list their own token and they come public and they start to, you know, file registration statements. A circle is crossing the chasm. You know, it's possible for a Tether or for a Binance to cross the chasm, you know, and get registered and get regulated. The question really is, you know, how will the regulators approach that and do they make that easy or hard? 
like they can say, uh, like, I'll give you an example of Ethereum crossing the chasm. Okay, everyone give up all their Ethereum that got it in the ICO or the pre-mine and disclaim all beneficial ownership to all of your Ethereum and stop interfering with the protocol. And if you can prove that you did that, then maybe it's a commodity. If you can't prove you did it, well, then disclose everything you've done and become a security, right? And so it's, it's possible to cross the chasm if the regulators create the transition mechanism. And so really this comes down to what is the SEC going to allow? Because the SEC is going to be, they're going to set the tone for every other regulatory agency in the U.S., and that'll set the tone for every regulatory agency in the rest of the world. And look, if you're a Bitcoin maximalist, Bitcoin doesn't care. You don't care, right? If you, you, know, if you self-custody, run your own node, and you're Bitcoin only, none of this matters to you, except for one point. The one point is there's $500 trillion worth of money locked up in the traditional financial system. And to the extent that this gets normalized uh, and you can start to funnel money into 401ks at Fidelity and if Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan start to handle this and if Bitcoin starts being viewed as a, as a <clears throat> neutral, permissionless, non-sovereign store of value, uncorrelated asset, <clears throat> then the way it matters to you is that... Uh, hundreds of billions and then trillions of dollars are going to flow into Bitcoin and Bitcoin's price is going to go from $16,000 a coin to $160,000 a coin to $1.6 million a coin to $10 million a coin. What are your thoughts on Michael Saylor's classifications of digital assets? In addition to Bitcoin, what other crypto assets will you consider a digital commodity? Also, how long do you think we have to wait to get some much needed regulation for digital assets? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you never miss any of our future uploads. Thanks for watching.